Okay, so now I'm back for the last third and last time today on this thing, anti-war. So I did the, the lens bin 40, which was very good. This is an alternate channel, my main channel, you know, my main channel. And then I did the um, Evan Williams eggnog, which was exceptionally good. And now this thing, the Rita's, Rita's mango Rita. Mango Rita, oh my goodness. Mangorita, sparkling margarita, contains alcohol, 8% alcohol, oh man, so Mangorita, Mangorita, twist cap, bottle, now some people told me, I've never seen bottles, so all the tall cans, I said, we do get the bottles here, we get the bottles, we get the bottles, This is like orange soda. <laughs> it's a brilliant concept in a way. You make a beer based product that looks like orange soda and people like that kind of stuff so they'll buy it. Look, no head of foam except for the slightest little bit and it's semi clear and it's orange like mango juice. It is so crazy. And then GNJK who doesn't know, I don't think he knows about this alternative channel. He, he comments on my channel a lot or he used to, he may not anymore. He told me, he said, I think you're doing too many of these. I said, I agree. He might have taken that as me, me being smart. I like, no, I do agree. I just that I kept finding them, you know, so I was like, I'll try this. I'll try that. You know, I wasn't like caught up in it. I just figured I'll try them. It ain't going to hurt anything. I mean, what difference does it make? Like Hillary Clinton said, what difference does it make? Okay, so, um, so there's your uh, knee-high, Fago. Um, sun kiss looking thing or tang if y'all remember tang that was so bad <laughs> smells like mango true story though it smells like mango true story it tastes like mango juice or like a, a mango pop or soda pop like they say in pennsylvania down here, people don't say those words. They really just say uh, a soft drink. Call it a soft drink. Hard drinks, beer, wine, and liquor, and then soft drinks. But this ain't soft. Um, or actually, some people will say, I want an orange Coke. They'll like call everything Kleenex, like no matter what brand it is. Or everything a Band-Aid, no matter what brand could be great value, bandage. They're going to call it a Band-Aid. Give me one in Walmart Band-Aids. Or if it's a, something like this, they'll call it an orange Coke. Give me an orange Coke. I want a, I want a, a, a grape Coke. And you're like, well, that's not Coke. It says, clearly says Fago orange soda. But, you know, it's like talking to the wall. It's like when things get entrenched in their mind, you can't shift it. And it's sort of like this anti-war concepts. When things get entrenched in people's minds, it's, you just cannot separate. You can't break it. And we're talking about, I was thinking about Tulsi Gabbard. She's the only Democrat running that's anti war. All the other libs, I call them the libs. That's the term I use, the libs, you know. And then the, the I just don't feel like keeping, I just don't like, I don't feel like repeating myself saying liberal. That's three syllables. So I say lives, one syllable. And then them, they'll say wing nuts, wing nuts, which is a short form term of right wing nuts. Well, I'm not a nut. <laughs> um, I'm not crazy. I know what I'm doing. Um, so Gabbard. She's interesting now. You've had a lot of the real crazy, I say crazy, I don't mean they're crazy. They're just like real hardcore hammer and sickle types, you know, like a so called Beto O'Rourke and all of them dropping out. But you still got Warren. She's hard left. She'd have done very well in the people's uh, great proletarian cultural revolution. She'd have been purged later because she'd have been too left wing, you know. 
like all the extreme left wing revolutions got purged in 1976-77 when the uh, more moderate communist totalitarian Deng Xiaoping took over in his faction. I mean, yeah, they supported ruthless communism, but they wanted it to be more like sensible. You know what I'm saying? Like it doesn't help us. We can't build a communist paradise in China if we all starve in the death. You know, so that was their idea, I, I, um, understanding of it. And then Gabbard is the only one that's pro, that's anti-war. And I think she's truly anti-war. She wants non-intervention and um, she's kind of like Lou Rockwell and uh, Ron Paul. She's kind of like a liberal version of Ron Paul. And people like Ronnie S. were saying, you should support her. And I said, let me check her out. I'm like Waltz and uh, The Godfather, check him out. But I can't, I wouldn't support her because she's got super left-wing ideology when it comes to the, ec the economy, economics. I mean, she's so far removed from free enterprise, it's a joke. It's laughable. I don't support candidates that are hostile to free enterprise. I'm sorry, I don't do it. Like, like Dana Carvey said, nah, gonna die. Not gonna die. It's not prudent. She's pro-abortion. I don't. I don't support pro-abortion candidates. I don't care who they are and what they're offering. Once you once you uh, rise in that, we are at, we're quits. You know what I'm saying? Bye bye. It would be like telling me, well, it's okay to to shoot at civilians because they're in the way in a shootout. No, no, I, I'm going to be like Pope Francis and say, you know, that's like hiring a hitman, you know, to kill your own baby. That's what Pope Francis said. He said, women who have an abortion, is like hiring a hitman. And for the lit, you, you say, I haven't heard about Pope Francis in the last couple of years. Exactly. They turned on him, you know, the liberals were like really excited about Pope Francis at first. Oh yeah, he's a progressive Pope. And it was like, Kumbaya, Pope Francis, and all of that, Kumbaya. And I was like, oh yeah, but you'll turn on him because he's gonna keep the faith. He's gonna follow the doctrines of the church unless he's the anti-Pope, which the Bible talks about this uh, false prophet that comes along claiming to be the Pope, you know, be an anti-Pope who's going to team up with this anti-Christian world leader, the anti-Christ, you know, they'll like, be like a tag team of evil. But the liberals thought maybe this is him. This is the anti-Pope. This is the great false prophet. And they were like, yeah, he's going to support all these left-wing ideas. And he may, because, you know, he talks about the uh, global warming and the environment. He has some of those kind of like liberal ideas about the environment. So they were like, oh, yeah, go, Pope Francis. Go, Pope Francis. But I said, I was telling my friends, I said, just wait. When he starts putting in that Catholic doctrine on him, they're going to turn on him like white on rice. And when he said uh, having an abortion was like hiring a hitman. That was the end of their support. And there's no more support for Pope Francis from the liberal left. They turned on him. It was like when Charles Manson made an X on his forehead, they were like, yeah, X out the big man. You know, X out the man. Wipe out the man. Power to the people. We're like the SLA, baby. And then when he turned that X into a swastika, <laughs> <laughs> they they turned on him. You never seen people turn faster on somebody than when they turned on Charles Manson in 1971, I think it was, when he, he turned the X into a swastika. They went from full bore support, you know, they stuck a knife in those pigs, you know, to whoops, can't support him. He's crazy. He's crazy. <laughs> and then, uh, Pope Francis, they turn on him. So G Gabbard, I wouldn't support her, you know. Yeah, she has good, uh, she should hire me as an advisor. I would try to give her some good um, doctrinal support and some good free enterprise support. I would help her out. I would say, Tulsi, look, 
Let me help you out, Tulsi Gabbard. You hostile to free enterprise. That's a problem. You support abortion. That's a real problem. Nobody's going to support you. you. That's why you're in the single digits. You're just the same old drudgery of the Democrats, except you're anti-war. That's why Hillary Clinton said you're probably a Russian agent. <laughs> Everybody had to laugh at that. So um, this is an A for what it is a flavored malt beverage. It is an A, it's most excellent. It tastes like you're eating mango, I swear it. This company is fascinating, Anheuser-Busch. I just don't like what it is. You see what I'm saying? And what for what it is, it's most excellent. I just don't like what it is. I don't like flavored malt beverages. They're everything beer should not be, you know? Beer should not taste like knee-high orange drink. But what do I know for orange drink? You know, it's not my role to decide what people drink. I'm not a neo-Puritan. I don't go around preaching about, stop vaping. You know, stop smoking cigarettes. I, I don't do that. I'm not a neo-Puritan. I'm not. I'm a libertarian. I believe people should do what they want. As long as they don't hurt other people. You say, well, what about abortion? It's your own body. Yeah, but you're hurting somebody else. You're killing a child. But I can always win that argument. I can always win that argument. That's that's like the easiest argument in the world to win. You don't even have to like play games with that. You could just destroy them on that argument. That's that's like basic. That's that's basic math. That's not even complicated. That's not even difficult. Now another thing she does is she uh she was like anti gay marriage, homo so called homosexual marriage. Same-sex marriage. I don't know what, what what term you're supposed to call it now. They changed the rules a lot. And now she's pro-same-sex marriage. Well, uh, you know, uh, in a logical sense, that would be bad because you're supporting something that is quite obviously aberrant. I mean, a child could figure this out. You know, it's like, go plug in. Uh, oh, I have a heater here. And I plug it into the wall. So you got to do plug a heater in the wall or in the outlet. You got it. Anything else, you have to be a fool. A fool would have to believe that. And I'm not trying to be ugly or hurtful, but you really would. You say, well, the left supports it, but they don't believe it. They're not stupid. They don't believe that uh, putting uh plugging in a cord into another cord is going to work. You know what I'm saying? Like you wouldn't take an electrical outlet. I mean, an electrical, what do you call that, a, um, a plug, and try to plug it into a plug. I mean, you're not going to take an outlet and put, put it in with an outlet. That's common sense. I mean, we're not dealing with children. So you say it's all the same. No, it's not the same. It's not the same. So, of course, you can't support that because then you're, you're, insulting the real marriage, which is a man and a woman, the actual marriage, the real marriage, not the pretend marriage. You say, well, you know, well, Steve and, and Joey, they love each other and they're so attached. Well, that's good. And I'm not against that. If they, it's aberrant, it's like unnatural. You know, I want Steve to go with Sally and I want um, Joey to go with Belinda. And have children and be a fruitful and multiply. But I know people have problems and they uh, have strange affectations and strange attachments. But I can't say, well, you have a strange attachment, so I'm going to say you should have it legalized and recognized and we're going to all uh, celebrate it and throw rice at a wedding. I would not do that. <laughs> but she supports it. And furthermore, it's a problem because she supports anti-federalism uh, or, or, or she, she supports concepts uh, hostile to the Federal Republic. When the United States was created in 1788 with the new constitution, you know what I'm saying, not, not the Articles of Confederation, which we should have kept, which would have alleviated all these problems. But um, but let's go with the constitution. It's in, it's in effect. 1788 gets approved. Well, the way it was designed was each state will handle their own internal affairs. Each state controls their internal affairs. 
So Mississippi, you say, oh, I don't like Mississippi. They're a bunch of old country people that got old ideas. Well, you know, you don't have to like Mississippi. Go to hell, you know, excuse my language. I start thinking about that. And then I think about 1863 in Gettysburg. I start getting riled up. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry. I apologize. Okay. I shouldn't, I shouldn't say that. I retract that statement. I can't ever visit Gettysburg again. I'll just like go crazy, you know, but I mean, I might visit it, but I'll, I'll still go crazy. But anyway, um, the way the constitution is supposed to work, each state decides their internal affairs. So you say, well, California, they recognize the sanctity of the same sex marriage. Okay, well, good. Let California do what they want to do. That's a separate state and Mississippi can do what they want to do. But you see the liberal left, they don't care about federalism. They believe in a monolithic government. All states should be the same. They believe in a unitary government. That is not the United States. That's a unitary republic. And even the conservatives, or I should say the so-called conservatives, listen to them carefully on the radio, television, internet. They always say, we are a democratic republic. We are a republic, not a democracy. I say, no, stop. I tell them, stop, back up, hold on. We're a federal republic. We support federalism. You never get a response. They don't know what you're talking about. Well, how could they know what you're talking about? They don't know anything. These people don't understand federalism. You can't discuss federalism if you don't understand, excuse me, if you don't know what the concept is. You say, well, the Supreme Court ruled that Louisiana must recognize same sex marriage. Okay, so Louisiana recognizes it, but not really. It's under the threat of force. Uh, abortion under the threat of force. It's like somebody puts a gun to your head and says, sign this paper, I'll blow your brains out. You sign it. Well, it's not legitimate. It's not a real signature. It's not an actual agreement. It was under duress. It's like when Germany signed the Versailles Treaty. You know what the premise was there? You can sign it or we're going to invade you. Now, the German government's attitude was, okay, if we had enough power to resist you, we would tear the treaty up and throw it in your face. But we're not strong right now. So we'll sign it. Because you got a gun to our head. But the Germans said, but remember this. Remember this. Never let yourself be caught slipping. That's what you got to remember. Never get caught slipping. But we'll sign it because we did an analysis and we realized we cannot win at this particular time. But we'll sign it. But that's all we're going to say. In Louisiana, in Mississippi, in Alabama, and Georgia, and Florida, or maybe, well, maybe not Florida, but we're saying, okay, okay. And where does all these rulings come from? The, 40, the 14th Amendment. And you know, I've rant and raved about the 14th Amendment about a million times. That's the problem, the nefarious 14th Amendment. And when I hear these conservative talk shows, they go on and on, you know, they never shut up like me, but, the, but they're wrong and I'm right. So the conservative talk shows talk about, oh, the Supreme Court, they're legislating from the bench. Oh, they're legislating. I say, well, it's the problem. The problem is the 14th Amendment. Oh, never hear a response. Well, they don't know what you're talking about. They're ignorant. So you've got to educate. 47th Street says, it's not about marriage. It's about divide and conquer. Exactly. The tear down stage. Communists always tear down, go to the foundation and rebuild. As you once said, local solutions for local problems. Right. But liberals believe in national solutions for local problems. See the difference? And I believe Tulsi Gabbard believes in national solutions for local problems. We cannot support that. We cannot support that. We got to support federalism and we will support it and we're not going to deviate. Anyway, I'm going to go start, the, I'm going to go walk and then I'm going to go start cooking the lunch and then I got grass to mow. John and Neil A is doing, a, I don't know why, it caught me off guard. He said he's going to do an ex, imperial stout evaluation today. And I was thinking, well, you always you already do stout Sunday. 
So why are you doing this special edition Imperial Stouts? But I said, well, okay, I'll join. You know, I have an Imperial Stout. It's called Mex. It's called 10W40 Mexican Hot Chocolates made with a Car Carolina Reaper peppers and all. It's a 16 ounce can, so I can review it solo, record the review, and then have enough beer to go on there and do a hangout for uh, 30 or 40 minutes. And I'm going to watch sports. Subject Zero says, with government this size, anarchy is the only way. No, I don't agree with that. Anarchy is a tool of communists. You see, if you study history, you'll find that anarchists are very stupid people. They're violent. They're murderous. They're evil. Yes, I'll give them all that. But they're stupid. And they always work at the behest of communists. So what happens is the anarchists set off the bombs, cause the mayhem, block the traffic, do all their stuff you know, typical stuff. Soon as the communists take power, the first people they kill are the anarchists. They're liquidated immediately. They don't have time for these morons. So the anarchists are very useful idiots. They do all their disruption. They have their poetry and their uh, wall design. You know, they put stuff on their wall and they're so, so uh, uh, romantic. The day after the communists take power, the first people they wipe out and liquidate are the anarchists. They say, thank you for your help. We don't have time for your stupidity. They have all their names on a list anyway. So they're, they're wiped out. You say, well, that sounds like a very clever way to operate. It is a clever way. I didn't say it wasn't evil. It's, it is evil. But it's clever. I didn't. I, I, when did you ever hear me say the communists were not clever? I never said they weren't clever. So, anarchy is not the only way. In fact, it's not even a good way. Don't be a tool of the. Uh, don't be a tool of international communism. Don't fool yourself. Most libertarians are a tool of Marxism and Leninism. Believe me. Read. Read libertarian websites. These people are so lost, so deluded. I say you're playing right into their hands. Hell, they probably started the libertarian movement. You knucklehead. Start studying it. Look at who's running it. Get a grip. Wake up. America, awake. 